Oh baby, it's time to get this brand new hero. What's up guys, this is Ashlox. This hero, Ice-T Peta, actually summoned her on the account I want to showcase her on, but the file got corrupted, so I'm just gonna summon her on another account, right? So this hero seems to be quite of a powerhouse. Is, is it more power creep? Uh, how powerful is she for cleaving? This attacks everyone, single target attack. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff is going on in uh, her skills. I'll talk about them as I summon her. And uh, man, when you guys will see the build that I have her on, yeah, it is pretty insane. So let's start it off here. Here we are, boys. This is my third account. I'm actually going to showcase her on the fourth account, but we'll see. Maybe she's insanely good and I can have her on different builds. So I might build her on more than one account. So let's go here. I have the covenant bookmarks. Peta is here, let's do some X10 summons and see how lucky am I. I mean, am I gonna join the 121 club? Am I gonna get the artifact here? Let's find out. Oh man, I'm not going to tell you guys the result of the summoning session where the file got corrupted, of course. Not the first time this happens to me, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, let, let, let's, let's see, man. Let's see what happens here. This artifact actually gives effectiveness, lower skill cooldown, and she's got two skills that do have cooldown, two skills that she can use. So definitely going to be a powerful artifact for her. Now the question, the big question that I have about this hero is, can you deal damage with her? Because if you can deal damage, I can't skip this. Uh, if you can deal damage with her, that is going to be very, very interesting. So fight artifact, is it going to be her own artifact? Let's see here. It is not, but it's sort of a winter shadow. Okay, not bad. Let's continue here. So yeah, that's the big thought that I have about her. And she's getting barrier from the skill number three, which scales based on her maximum level. When they did the preview, the official preview of the hero, she had 19,000 health. The barrier looked thick and the barrier is based on her maximum level. So if you have less health, the barrier will be still very thick. So yeah, I'm uh, very curious about that. And she introduced some new things uh, i mean the escort buff that she gets is going to be very interesting because 30 percent of the damage that your team takes will be resurrected upon her now do you need to build some health on her that is the question or can you just cleave and get some extra you know some ability boost get some nice damage from her okay five star artifact oh goblet of oath very cool very cool and i'm definitely uh, feeling like this artifact can be put to good use so this video will have her getting summoned and I'll show you guys the build. 15 skill ups, I'll show you guys uh, what she looks like, how her stats look like and uh, I'm gonna go for damage guys. Damage with high effectiveness, with like very high speed, it's a lot of stats. Like there's attack too, like crit crit damage, it's so many stats. So the question is, is it going to be worth building her that way? And for players that don't have the gear level, can she still perform well if you don't use her for any damage and sort of like use her for reducing buff duration by one turn, taking immunity off of the enemy, putting enable to buff debuff, putting restrict on them for two turns from the skill two, dealing some damage. Maybe you can have her with C-Dom to push C-Dom by landing critical hits with the skill number two, right? And then she gets an extra turn that is completely crazy. So you can do skill two into skill three or skill two into skill one. And skill 3 is a non-attack skill. So that's problematic, right? Politis, non-attack non skill. Selene could be causing some problem, a problem for you. So there is that to worry about. Now she gets barrier. She gets stealth. And stealth is very powerful when you have barrier. I can't skip this. Oh my god. Okay. You can have Moonlight Heroes, of course. It's not a 3-star ML. Uh, that I still don't have the dark one. Januta, I showcased him. He's actually better than you guys might think. So maybe you should go check out the showcase. Another 5-star artifact. So yeah, the escort with the damage redirection. Very cool. She gets stealth and bear nice goblet of oath. And uh, the question is, what about damage redirection? When she takes damage, it's going to destroy the barrier first. But what if the barrier is broken? Is she going to get kicked out of stealth? That is the question that I have. And I want to test her out. I want to see how it actually works and of course i want to see the damage of the skill number two and the skill one of course like how hard does it hit because uh, if it hits hard that's going to be very very interesting she's got effectiveness for her own memory imprint uh, she's got defense for top and back position i believe so it can be put to good use 
and uh, if you know a lot of effectiveness that you will need on her because you know reducing buff duration by one turn putting enable to buff debuff restrict that's some powerful stuff with 128 base speed yeah you can definitely open with this hero you can put your speed gear to good use on this hero uh, and she brings attack buff for the whole team beside herself when you use the skill number three right so very very interesting um you know damage boost for the team because of the attack buff so that's definitely very good and you don't need to rely on landing the fans break which is rough now the skill 2 attacks everyone and of course counter attacks will be problematic counter attack elbrus ritual sword counter mechanism built into a hero like that's gonna be uh, a problem especially if you don't build her tanky because she might just go down because of that so that's something to worry about and you definitely don't want to skip the skill too because it, it you know it does a lot of stuff but also she gets an extra turn so it is sort of like taking a turn off of the skill number two which i really like uh so yeah there's that and a hero that doesn't need to soul burn to actually you know go again get an extra turn is such a powerful thing now is it some major power creep to me so here it is 121 club so yeah it seems to be power creep but i need to put her to good use uh we'll test her out we'll see how she performs how her artifact performs and i'll be putting her in high speed team with high offensive damage and we'll see you know landing debuffs uh, what about the escort buff that she has uh how good is it boosting the survivability of the team uh how thick the barrier is because it's based on her maximum level uh right so that's really really cool anyways let me show you guys how i actually built her with 15 skill ups let me talk about how um to build her if you don't have many molagora right and let me tell you about the result uh about how i got her on the first account where it actually got corrupted the footage got corrupted uh really a kick in the balls when that happens uh but yeah okay let's see all right guys here we are on my fourth account so what was the result of the summoning session that got corrupted well the good news is i got her artifact very cool i can test that out for you guys I have her at 15 skill ups, but I did join the 121 club. I'm perfectly fine with that because, because I got her artifact. So it's all good. It's all good. So let me show you guys uh, how I would skill her up if I didn't have many Molagora. I'll show you guys how I build her up, what kind of stats I have on her, which is pretty insane. Pretty insane. So in terms of skill ups, uh, the first thing is that the skill to give an extra turn. You have to skill this thing up um if she's able to deal a lot of damage now let's check the showcase after that let's see what kind of damage she's able to do because if she does a lot of damage and assuming you can get offensive stats on her and effectiveness and speed it's a lot of stats guys it's a lot of stats i'll talk about stat priority as well uh in a minute here but uh yeah the build if you are low on molagora and you want to use her for utilities maybe you don't have the stats maybe you want to push the speed effectiveness and health that's the majority of your stats if they're going in all these three things right so yeah get minus uh one cooldown so plus three on the skill three plus three on the skill number two get both of the minus one turn cooldown with her artifact it's gonna work well together right and uh then the skill one the thing is more stun chance right better stun chance if you bring this thing to plus two and plus four but you have the soul burn for 100% chance. So maybe you don't really need it. And if the battles are short, then you do your combo of skill 2 and to the skill number 3. She did the majority of the work already, right? You can always do skill 2 and to skill 1, right? Maybe you really want to stun someone. Maybe you have the souls. So you're probably going to want to soul burn the skill number 1. Uh, so yeah, skilling up will not be a big deal with the skill 1. But if the damage is good on, on her, right? What you can do is have plus three and then max this thing right plus four and plus five that's 10 percent damage each 20 percent you know more damage is going to be quite uh good but she needs so many stats that i don't know if we can really push the damage with this hero that is the big question that i have right very stat hungry uh now of course uh get more effect uh, chance if you have like specimen says if you need to rely on the stun and you will not have the gale's ancient book to really guarantee the soul burn here so yeah, that's the build for a low amount of Molagora. Uh, plus three, plus three. Max it if you want damage. If the damage is actually good by checking the showcase and 
hearing what I'm saying in the review, right? Um, if you want better stun chance here, get it to plus four. Uh, if you feel you're not going to have the souls. But after that, I mean, I would max the skill two first. And uh, if the barrier is strong because it's based on her maximum health, max the skill three as well. Uh, but you should probably get the effect chance first before you max skill number three. It really depends how thick the barrier is. Are you going to be using her for utilities? Uh, so yeah, few builds that are available for this hero. Uh, memory imprint, effectiveness for herself, uh, defense for top and front, uh, back, I mean. Uh, so yeah, pretty good stuff. Now her build, her stats are quite insane, guys. Look at the speed that I have, 252. Look at the effectiveness, it's 220%, but then her artifact gives more effectiveness, 22.5%. So I'm going to be at 142.5% effectiveness. I feel comfortable with that, you're right. Uh, the non-attack skill of the skill number 3, reducing skill cooldown by 1 turn. Very cool, because you use the skill 2 already into skill 3. So not only you got an extra turn, so that means this thing is basically a 4 turn cooldown after you use it. And then after you use the skill 3, uh, it's down to 3 turn cooldown. So very cool. Uh, 4 turn here, 3 turn after using the, uh, I mean, uh, after the artifact triggers. I really like that. I, I feel like the skill 2 and 3 are quite invaluable. So the stats that I have on her, sorry about that. Look at the gear that I have. It is pretty insane, guys. So I think that having high speed on her with effectiveness and a pretty nice amount of health could be one way to go about it, right? Uh, so it needs to be tested. I'll put her to the test. We'll see what she's able to do. But I feel good about uh, the stats. Now the question is, is her damage multiplier on skill three, uh, skill two and one good? If they're not good, then uh, that build's not gonna be so strong. I would go with, uh, like I said, speed, effectiveness, and health. But in terms of stat priority, if you have more room to work with, right? After getting like effectiveness, speed, uh, then let's say health, you wanna bring the crit chance to 100%, especially if you're gonna pair her with Challenger Domino. Landing a bunch of crits with the skill number two, pushing the CR of Challenger Domino is gonna be super strong sh so she can follow up. I mean, you're gonna have a tag buff, gonna have crit chance buff for the team. That is going to be pretty insane of a start, right? 128 base speed on Peta, like that is so good. So she can definitely be used as an opener. Now, if you have a lot of room in terms of stats, then after getting 100% crit chance, and of course you got the speed, the effectiveness first, uh, if the damage is good, maybe you can skip the health because the barrier is scaling off of her maximum health. I mean, you go for attack and crit damage after that. It is insane. Like, she's super stat hungry if we're pushing the damage. If she can actually do damage. So, anyways, stay tuned for the showcase, guys. Let's see what she can do. Let's see her performance because I definitely have some pretty top end gear on her, right? That's the thing. Uh, some of the rolls on these pieces of gear are quite insane. Uh, so, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys will be like, what is this, right? So you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it is pretty crazy. The ring is not that good. And the boots I just rolled, uh, very surprised. A lot of this gear was not even plus 15. I reforged and all that just before the video. So yeah, can't wait to put her to good use. Um, how powerful is she? Big, like power creep? OP? I mean, we'll find out. But uh, for a cleave setup, she seems to be uh, helping. You know, that attack buff for the whole team is already real strong, especially if she can deal some pretty solid damage on top of everything else that she can do. So yeah, let us know what you guys think about all that in the comment section. Good luck to everyone that is summoning for her. Let us know about your results in the comment section. That's it for this one. I'm Ashton. Good luck with all y'all. Do peace out for now.